for the second video, we will tackle about the laws of thermodynamics, but we will only um, solve equations or problems relating to one law of thermodynamics, which is the law of conservation of energy or the first law of thermodynamics. But before that, let us identify or learn some important definition of terms that we will use. What is the universe? What is the surroundings? And what is the system? So by looking at this figure, as you can see, the system is just a portion of the universe that we are studying. The rest are the surroundings. And collectively, both of them are the universe. So as you can see, the universe is just equal to the system and the surroundings. And there are types of system. One is the open system when matter and heat can be exchanged. An example of this is a glass of water where air can go inside the glass of water and the water can go outside freely. Heat can also be exchanged through the glass or the same way as the gas. A closed system on the other hand, other hand doesn't have an exchange of matter, only an exchange of heat energy. An example of this is an Erlenmeyer flask with a cork. So let's say or let's assume that the cork is very airtight, meaning any matter inside cannot go out and any matter from outside cannot go in. But the heat can still be exchanged through its um, glass. An isolated system does not allow any exchange at all. An example of this is a bomb calorimeter where it is very airtight and it has also a vacuum beside it so that heat energy cannot go outside and inside or vice versa. So let's talk about the zeroth law of thermodynamics. Just a short historic history about this. It is called the zeroth law because it is um, the most fundamental law of thermodynamics. But the first law of thermodynamics was first explained before this. And they do not want to replace it as the first law. So instead, they made it as the zeroth law. The zeroth law of thermodynamics only t tells the thermal equilibrium of three objects. If x and y are in thermal equilibrium and y and z are in thermal equilibrium, then x and z are in thermal equilibrium. That's it. For the second law, or the first law of thermodynamics, which is also the second law in the four laws, it is the law of conservation of energy. So energy is cannot be created nor destroyed. It just, it just cycles from conversion. So it for, goes to another form and then goes to another form and so on. It is just a cycle. So energy can neither be created nor destroyed, but only converted to another form. So as you can see, um, here are some important equations that we need to know. There are only two, but there are times, or there are only one actually, but there are times that we can rewrite the equation in other forms depending on the type of problem. So first, what is delta E? It just tells that the internal energy or the energy rather of the final state minus the energy of the initial state. <clears throat> then it can be found using the heat exchange plus the work done. It's either by the system or on the system. And the Q is depends on if it is... Um, exothermic or endothermic. The W or the work can also be in terms of pressure and volume. So this is the another form, another form of this equation. So as you can see, delta E is a change in internal energy. Q is the change in heat or heat exchange. Work is W is work is done. Pressure is P is pressure. Change in V is a change in volume. So let's just remember the sign conventions. Later on, you will see this again. So let's try this um, type of problem. 
When gasoline burns in an automobile engine, the heat release causes the product CO2 and H2O to expand, which pushes the piston outward. If the expanding gases do 451 joules of work on the piston and the system loses 325 of joules of heat, calculate the change in internal energy in J or in joules. So the sign conventions are this if the heat exchange if the system is exothermic it is negative if it is endothermic it is positive if the work is done by the system by the system to the surrounding it is negative if the work is done on the system it is positive so let's try this problem so as you can see first we, ha we already have the Q and the work. So, 451 joules of work. So, this means W is equal to 451. Then, 325 joules is the heat exchange. Now, let's see who's positive, who's negative, and which is which. So, the work is done on the piston on the piston and it is expanding gas so the system which is our gas made the work done on the surrounding meaning the work is done by the system to the surrounding meaning it is the magnitude of our work is negative 451 joules next is the heat exchange since the system loses, from the word loses, it means that it is releasing energy. Thus, it is exothermic. Then, both of them are negative. So, as you can see, Q is negative 325 joules and W is negative 451 joules. Then, by using the equation, delta E is equal to Q plus W, let's just add both of the magnitudes and we will get the change in internal energy is equal to negative 776 joules next let's try another one but this time there are no given work done but rather there is pressure and change in volume so we will use the second equation a gas was placed in a piston cylinder device it releases 400 joules of heat and expands from 2.5 liters to a final volume of 8.50 liters against an external pressure of 1.5 atmospheres calculate for the change in the internal energy note that one liter atmosphere is equal to 101.325 joules so let's first identify which is q which is w since there is no work done, we already know that 400 joules is the Q. Since it releases 400 joules, meaning it is releasing heat, or rather exothermic, then 400 is negative. Now, we will not use the work done here because we do not have W, but rather we will use the equation itself, P, negative P, delta V. So, delta V is just final minus initial volume. So, by substitu substituting the um, quantities, negative 400 joules minus the product of 1.5 atmosphere and that is 6 liters. So, we all know let's go back we all know that liter atmosphere is one liter atmosphere is equal to 101.325 joules so we will use this as a conversion factor so that this will be in terms of joules and not in terms of liter atmosphere because if we do that we cannot um, do arithmetic of joules and liter atmosphere so this will cancel out and the liters will also cancel out. This will be in joules. And the final answer will be negative 1311.9 joules. 
Next is the second law of thermodynamics. This only talks about mostly on entropy, on sp spontaneity. As you can see, irreversible processes increase the total entropy of the universe and reversible processes do not affect the total entropy. Spontaneous irreversible processes increase the total entropy of the universe. Thus, the total entropy of the universe will constantly increase. So what is entropy, actually? Entropy is very difficult to grasp, but I will try to explain it in a simpler way. Entropy is the change in this or the disorderness of a system. The more disordered the system or the surrounding or whatever you are talking about or being studying on, the entropy increases. The more stable and organized the substance, the more, the lesser the entropy is. And the entropy is kind of the probability of the um, natural, the states, the number of microstates of a system. So as you can see, the total entropy of the universe will constantly increase. So for a reversible reaction, the change of entropy of the universe is just zero. There is no change. For irreversible processes, the change of energy or change of entropy of the universe is always positive. But because everything in the universe collectively has irreversible, irreversible processes, then this, uh, the universe or the entropy of the universe will constantly increase and not become zero or negative. So it can be um, solved using two equations, one with the microstates, which we will not tackle about, and one with the change of heat and temperature. So lastly is the third law of thermodynamics, which is in connection with the second law. The total entropy of your pure crystalline substance at absolute zero is zero. This also shows that attaining absolute zero for any substance is impossible due to the second law of thermodynamics, meaning the entropy at zero Kelvin is zero. But this is impossible. Why? So as you can see, Q over T, where T is the temperature. If we divide anything by zero, in terms of math or in the field of mathematics, it is undefined, meaning this is impossible. Thus, attaining absolute zero of any substance is impossible. And that will end our second video.